Anabolic steroids are the most popular drugs used to enhance body image and performance. They were created in the 1930s and they have been used to treat many different health conditions such as hypogonadism, anemia, depression and sarcopenia, which is a pathological loss of muscle mass that we see in some cases of cancer and HIV AIDS. Many people also use anabolic steroids for enhancement purposes to help them increase muscle mass and strength. Anabolic steroids are not only used by a few athletes and bodybuilders. Today, they are used by millions of men and women all over the world, including teenagers, recreational athletes and professionals, such as security personnel, or anyone who feels that the steroids help them improve their performance in sport and at work. These drugs can increase the risk of many health problems, such as infertility, acne, anxiety, depression, heart disease, liver and kidney damage, and many others. Some people experience only mild adverse effects, but others can have life-threatening conditions. Some of these effects can be prevented and treated with medication, and some might require surgery. Some effects are temporary, and others can be permanent. Still, some people choose to use anabolic steroids because they feel that the benefits outweigh the risks. And in countries such as the UK, using anabolic steroids is not a crime. So what can be done to reduce the risks? There is no guideline for using anabolic steroids safely without medical supervision. But there are strategies adopted by some people using anabolic steroids to prevent adverse effects. The golden rule is, if you don't want to have any adverse effects and never worry about anabolic steroids, don't use them. Anyone who have used anabolic steroids would agree that it's impossible to predict how your body will react to the drugs. And it's very unlikely that you are going to use them for a while without experiencing at least some adverse effects. That being said, in case you decide to use them, the strategy number one is train natural without anabolic steroids for as long as possible. You should have an established training routine and explore your natural limits before even considering taking anabolic steroids. There is no safe age to start using anabolic steroids. And it's even more dangerous if you are less than 21 years old, as these drugs can compromise your growth. Besides, research has shown that younger people who use steroids are usually in higher risk of using other drugs and developing symptoms of substance use disorder. Number two. The less, the better. The less you expose yourself to the anabolic steroids, the less likely you are to experience adverse effects. The best you can do is train without the drugs, or at least try to find the lowest possible dose to get the results you want. Number three, monitor your health. You should monitor your health before you start and during the use of anabolic steroids, so you can anticipate and treat health problems. That will help you decide if it's time to reduce the dose, change the drugs you're taking, or even stop them completely. There are many exams you should have regularly and under supervision of a health professional. These include a full blood count, glucose and cholesterol levels, liver enzymes, kidney function, testosterone, estrogen, and prolactin levels, and eventually an echocardiogram to look for changes in your heart. By the way, you're probably gonna have to pay for most of these exams, you know? Because the health system doesn't cover checkups to monitor the use of anabolic steroids. So you must be prepared to spend some money with prevention and treatment of adverse effects if you choose to use these drugs. Number four, never share needles and syringes and never reuse your equipment if you are injecting anabolic steroids. Otherwise, you're gonna expose yourself to infections in your skin and to blood-borne diseases, such as hepatitis and HIV AIDS. In countries such as the UK, Australia and the Netherlands, you can use the needle and syringe exchange program to have a free supply of injecting equipment and also receive advice on how to inject safely. Number five, take care of your mental health. Are you having trouble sleeping? Are you having symptoms of anxiety, depression, aggressiveness or suicidal thoughts? Make sure you have professional help to talk about these things. 
otherwise you might end up trying to self-medicate these symptoms, which can lead to all sorts of adverse effects. Number six, beware of symptoms of substance use disorder. Are you spending too much money on anabolic steroids or in things related to your body image? Are you putting your job at risk because of your training routine? If you are a student, are you being able to manage your time and achieving your goals? Have you got in trouble with the law because of anabolic steroids or other drugs? Ask yourself every once in a while, am I still in control of my life or things are going a bit out of hand? In the light of all these warnings, we might ask ourselves, should health professionals help people using anabolic steroids prevent and treat adverse effects even if they don't want to stop using anabolic steroids? The answer is yes, absolutely. You see, the lack of professional support will not stop people from using anabolic steroids. Most users will seek advice from their friends, dealing with adverse effects by trial and error and exposing themselves to further risks. There is plenty of evidence showing that harm reduction saves lives and reduces the costs of the health system because it prevents the most serious adverse effects associated with the use of anabolic steroids, such as heart attacks, liver damage, depression, and suicide. By the way, do you know how many cases of heart disease associated with the use of anabolic steroids we treat every year in the UK? Well, no one does. Because people using anabolic steroids are almost invisible to the health system. The majority of them don't tell their doctors they are using anabolic steroids because they feel uncomfortable. Or maybe because they consider that doctors don't know much about anabolic steroids. Doctors learn how to help people using drugs, such as alcohol, tobacco, cocaine, heroin. But few of us know how to treat adverse effects of anabolic steroids, except by telling our patients to stop using the drugs, which not everyone is willing to do. By doing that, we end up pushing these people away from the health system. Is that okay to refuse to prescribe exams and medications to someone who is not willing to stop using anabolic steroids? Think about it. We don't refuse treatment to people who are drinking, or smoking, or having an unhealthy diet, right? We treat them. We keep them engaged, supported, welcome, and alive until they decide to change their habits. And some of those habits can be even more dangerous than using anabolic steroids. And if people don't change their habits, we treat them anyway. Because no one should be invisible or pushed away from the health system. That's why health professionals must be willing and able to provide non-judgmental support for people using anabolic steroids. In the last few years, leading researchers have created free access databases with high quality information about anabolic steroids and other enhancement drugs such as the Human Enhancement Drugs Network and Anabolic Steroids UK. These are great initiatives, but there's a lot to be done. To reduce the risks and harms of anabolic steroids, we need to understand and support people who choose to use these drugs. If you are a health professional, try to learn more about anabolic steroids. If you are using anabolic steroids, take care of your health and try to prevent adverse effects. I hope these strategies will help us create a safer environment for everyone. Thank you for watching.